What if the next world-changing material isn't born in a reactor or spun in a carbon fiber lab, but in a tree? That's the subversive promise of Superwood, a humble plank put through a not-so-humble transformation until it's stronger than steel, six times lighter, and tough enough to shrug off heat and even bullets in lab tests. The pitch sounds like sci-fi marketing until you look under the microscope. This isn't gimmick wood, it's wood with its internal architecture re-engineered. Cellulose cables packed tight, the natural voids collapsed, and the molecular bonds between fibers multiplied. If steel was the 19th century miracle and plastics owned the 20th, Superwood is making a noisy case for the 21st. Let's start with the problem. Superwood is trying to solve. Our built world runs on steel and concrete, and the climate tab for that decision is massive. Embodied carbon analyses keep finding that swapping structural steel for engineered wood can shave a meaningful chunk off a project's upfront emissions, roughly a fifth in like-for-like -like comparisons, and policymakers are nudging the industry to start counting those numbers for real. The 2021 International Building Code even opened the door to tall mass timber buildings, up to 18 stories, while Europe's recast energy performance of buildings directive moves life cycle carbon from nice to have to mandatory accounting over the next few years. Translation, low carbon materials aren't a vibe, they're becoming code. So what is superwood really? Think of natural wood as a bundle of three things, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. The cellulose is your fiber optic bundle, long aligned chains that carry loads like tiny cables. Lignin is the glue and armor that keeps those cables rigid and the tree upright. In the University of Maryland breakthrough, you partially dissolve the glue with a warm bath of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfite, old friends from the pulp and paper world. Then you hot press the softened wood until the open tubes collapse and the cellulose cables are squeezed into near-perfect alignment. What you get is an ultra-dense plank where the nanofibers are so close that hydrogen bonds, those tiny Velcro-like attractions, proliferate. That's why strength and toughness jump by an order of magnitude, and why specific strength, strength per weight, beats most structural metals. In ballistic tests, laminated superwood stop projectiles that tore through natural wood of the same thickness. It's the same tree, just rearranged. Here's the short version you can tell your uncle at the barbecue. Cellulose are the fiber cables. Lignin is the glue. Remove a chunk of the glue, then mash the cables together so tightly that they start grabbing each other with millions of extra micro bonds. That's the click behind Superwood's ridiculous numbers. The densification and alignment, not magic resin, do most of the heavy lifting. And while scientists have been densifying wood for a century, the trick here is eliminating the springback and swelling that used to ruin the party when humidity changed. The Maryland team showed that with the right chemistry and pressing, the shape actually holds and the strength persists, even after weeks at 95% humidity. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps a ton with the algorithm and tells me to make more deep dives like this. Now for the part that separates papers from products. In 2025, a Maryland startup called InventWood started switching on the world's first industrial superwood line. Their early claims, about 50% higher tensile strength than structural steel on equal cross-section, a strength-to-weight ratio up to 10 times better, and a Class A fire rating, achieved largely by density and self-char, not by loading the board with flame retardants. First commercial targets aren't I-beams. They're things like facade panels, siding, and interior boards. Because that's where the path to certifications and cash flow is shortest. Structural components will take more testing and code work. But the roadmap is real, and it's backed by funding that includes a 20 million US dollar grant. Department of Energy award to scale up the tech. Is it actually fire safe, or just tested in a lab safe? Fire is where wood skeptics raise their hand, and fairly so. 
The baseline story is that densified wood tends to form a tight char that insulates the interior, dramatically slowing burn through. Researchers have also demonstrated coatings, like ultra-thin hexagonal boron nitride layers, that further boost fire performance on densified substrates. That said, a Class A surface rating is not the same thing as a full structural fire design, and getting superwood into primary load paths will mean proving performance in real assemblies under heat, smoke, and water. The good news? The mass timber world has already blazed a trail through codes with rigorous compartmentation, charring models, and protection rules. Superwood can piggyback on that playbook as it moves from cladding to bones. Let's talk applications without the hype fog. In construction, superwood makes immediate sense in places where you need high stiffness, impact resistance, and durability, but not yet the full alphabet soup of structural certification. Facades that replace metal and fiber cement, interiors that shrug off dents and look like tropical hardwood without eating a rainforest, window and door components that demand stability. From there, you can imagine laminated members, think LVL or CLT style layups, with superwood veneers taking the tensile zones, just like carbon plies in a composite spar. That's not tomorrow morning stuff, but as codes evolve, it's not fantasy either. Meanwhile, the mass timber world keeps expanding. Stockholm is literally building a wood city, and the US code already allows timber towers up to 18 stories. Superwood doesn't replace CLT, it sharpens it. Transportation is where the weight math gets spicy. In cars, the US Department of Energy's rule of thumb still holds, trim vehicle mass by 10%, and you save roughly 6 to 8% on fuel. If a part can be made in superwood at equal stiffness but far lower weight, that's free efficiency. And EVs care about mass as much as gas cars do. Aviation is slower and stricter, but cabin interiors, seat components, and monuments are plausible entry points because they're certification heavy but not primary structure, and every kilo saved in the cabin ripples through range and payload. Ships love weight savings too, mostly for payload economics. None of that means you'll see a superwood fuselage anytime soon. It means lightweight, stiff, fire-rated biocomposites have a seat at the table wherever aluminum and plastics currently rule. Defense. Here's the careful version. Ballistic tests in the original research showed that laminated superwood absorbed and spread impact in ways natural wood couldn't, crossing into the territory usually occupied by aramids and ceramics. That doesn't make it a drop-in Kevlar replacement. Ballistic protection is a game of multi-layer stacks, backings, and spall control but it does suggest you could build cheaper, lighter protective panels for doors, safe rooms, or vehicle interiors where stop fragments and slow rounds matters more than defeat rifle AP. The compelling angle is cost. Cellulose is abundant, and the process uses chemicals the pulp industry already handles. If superwood can hit price points below high-end composites, it could democratize protection for infrastructure and civilian use. Prove the durability, and the market is waiting. Energy infrastructure is another curveball. Wood already sneaks into wind via towers. Sweden's Modvian is assembling 100-meter towers from laminated veneer lumber, and there are pilots for wooden blades, mainly because recycling glass fiber blades is a headache. Superwood's stiffness and fatigue properties could make it interesting for secondary structures, nacelle housings, or tower components where weight and damping matter. Even if it never becomes a turbine blade, swapping steel for wood in supports and enclosures chips away at embodied carbon in the energy transition. Now, the sustainability ledger, because this is where things often get oversold. Using Woodlock's biogenic carbon in a product for decades, and LCAs of mass timber routinely show double-digit embodied carbon cuts compared to steel and concrete baselines. But wood good is not a blank check. Supply has to come from certified, responsibly managed forests with traceability that avoids illegal logging and biodiversity harm. Groups like WWWF are blunt about the risks, 
Surging demand without safeguards can push the wrong forests in the wrong places. The policy trend helps. Europe is mandating whole-life carbon reporting. The US is inching that direction. Investors and insurers are paying attention. But the climate benefit only holds if the forestry is real and the products last. Superwood's promise is that you can get tropical hardwood performance from fast-growing species and even wood waste. The responsibility is to actually source it that way. Okay, what about the fine print nobody in a glossy demo will mention? Scaling this process takes chemistry, heat, and water. The classic formula, partial delignification, then hot pressing, has to close the loop on chemical recovery and wastewater, or you've just traded one footprint for another. Industrial lines claim they've cut cycle times from a week to a few hours, and that they can stabilize boards for exterior use with light polymer impregnation. But those resins complicate end-of-life recycling and biodegradability. Dimensional stability, creep under long-term load, and weathering under UV and freeze-thaw all need years of field data, not months. The research trend is encouraging. Thermal modification and resin impregnation reduce creep. Dense char layers and advanced coatings boost fire performance. But buildings are 50-year bets. Superwood will have to earn trust one test report at a time. Cost is the other elephant. Steel is cheap, familiar, and backed by a century of supply chains. Carbon fiber is expensive, but proven. Superwood sits in the awkward middle potentially cheaper than high-end composites, potentially pricier than commodity steel on a per-part basis, with the upside of lower installed cost if you can machine it faster, finish it less, and ship fewer pounds. That's why early products are cladding and interior finishes where customers pay for aesthetics and performance. If those lines hum, volumes grow, and codes catch up, then the bones of the building moment gets real. Until then, Expect a lot of beautiful facades and a handful of pilot structures where engineers and AHJS are willing to push the envelope. Zoom out and Superwood is part of a wider materials arms race. Nanocellulose is sneaking into coatings and composites as a strength booster. Mycelium-based biocomposites are absorbing sound and insulating walls in low-load applications. Graphene is showing up in cement and asphalt as a performance tweak. None of these dethrone steel and concrete everywhere. They nibble at niches and, in some cases, redefine them. If Superwood ends up as the nature-based carbon fiber that makes buildings lighter, cars thriftier, and everyday objects tougher without fossil feedstocks, that's a reshaping of material culture, one plank at a time. So, is Superwood the next steel? or just the latest lab darling. Here's my read. The physics checkout, the early factories exist, and policy tailwinds are real. The hurdles, chemical loops, durability, cost parity, and code acceptance are heavy but solvable with time and iteration. Would I live in a house, drive a car, or work in a skyscraper with superwood inside? If the assembly is tested and the sourcing is clean, absolutely. The real question isn't whether wood can be made super, it's whether we'll be smart enough to use it where it truly wins. Would you trust your walls, your bike, or your next laptop to a material that grew on a hillside? I think we're about to find out. All the sources I used are linked below in the description. If you'd like to see how Dyson is saving the vertical farming, check the link down below. Thanks for watching.